In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can declare and pass values to multiple parameters in the same procedure. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. And as ever, we can click the Enable Content button if we need to. This is the same file we were working on in the previous part of this lesson, where we can enter the details of a film that we've watched and provide a score out of 10, and then click this Add to List button to have the film's details added to the appropriate worksheet according to its score. If we switch to the Developer tab and then open the Visual Basic Editor, we'll find that the code in there is basically as we left it at the end of the previous lesson. So we can see that we've got the three variables in the Add to List procedure, some basic validation code to check we've entered valid values. We capture the values for the appropriate cells in the variables, and then we call the Go to Sheet procedure passing the value of the movie score variable into the score to test parameter. This works out which worksheet the data should end up in. And then we return to the main procedure and write out these details into the appropriate cells. What we're going to do next is create a new procedure, which allows us to extract this section of code from the main procedure and pass three separate values, the movie title, date watched and movie score into it. Let's begin by declaring a new subroutine called write details. I'm going to insert that in between my two existing subroutines in this module. And then I need to think about declaring three separate parameters into which I can pass a string for the movie title, a date for the date watched, and an integer for the movie score. So in parentheses after the subroutine name, I'm going to call my first parameter title as string. To declare another parameter in the same procedure, all I need to do is type in a comma and then type in the name of the next one. I'll call this next one watch date, and the data type for this one will be as date. Finally, I'll declare a third parameter called score, and the type for this one will be as integer. I can then close the parentheses and hit enter, and there's a procedure declared with multiple parameters. Now we can extract the code from the main procedure that we want to replace with a call to the write details procedure. Let's select these four lines of code at the bottom of the main method and then cut those with control X. We can simply then paste those into the write details subroutine and let's just tidy up with a new blank line at the end. Now I just need to convert the names of what were the variables in the previous subroutine to match the names of the parameters in the one that I've just declared. So the first one is called title rather than movie title. So let's alter that one. Now I need to reference watch date rather than date watched. We can do that fairly quickly and simply watch date. And then finally, the third parameter is called score rather than the variable, which was called movie score. Now we need to make a call to the write details procedure from the place that we cut the original code in the main procedure. So let's just head down to below this comment and in the IntelliSense list, control and spacebar, we can look for the right details subroutine. If we then type in a space immediately after its name, we can see that the tooltip indicates that there are three parameters to pass a value into. So this time we need to reference the names of the variables which contain the values we want to pass to the various parameters. So first of all, we'll pass a value to the movie title, or pass the movie title variable to the title parameter. Once I've done that, I can type in a comma, which moves to the watch date parameter, and that will accept the date watched variable or the value of the date watched variable. Finally, I can pass the movie score variable to the score parameter, and that's a valid call to that subroutine. Once again, remember you can optionally use the word call to call a procedure you don't need the word call. And if you do use the word call, you must then enclose the argument list in a set of parentheses. Otherwise the syntax is not valid. As I said earlier on in the previous part of this lesson, I tend to prefer not to use the keyword call. Uh, so I'm just going to omit that. But if you are using call, don't forget about the parentheses. Now let's test that the procedure works. I've already checked in a previous video that this code up to this point works happily. What I really want to do is check just that the call to the right details procedure works properly. 
So rather than have to step through the entire procedure to get to just this last point, I'm going to set a breakpoint on this line. We've talked about breakpoints in an earlier module in this course. To set a breakpoint, I can simply click into the gray bar on the left hand side and I can remove it just as easily by clicking on the, uh, the gray bar again. A breakpoint allows me to run the procedure up to this point as quickly as the code can run and then pause and wait for me to step through the remaining code. So let's return to the Excel workbook and I can see that I've got some details entered here. If I click the add to list button, I'll be taken to the code and all of these steps have already happened. So I'm about to call my write details method and pass in the values of these various variables. So if I hit F8 to do that, I can see that I've called the subroutine write details and I've passed the correct bits of information into the appropriate parameters. So I should be able to see that these lines of code now work. And then when I end this subroutine, it will return to the next statement in the calling procedure, which is just to end that subroutine as well. So let's end the entire sub. I'll just remove the breakpoint and then return to Excel just to make sure my details have ended up in the correct worksheet. Indeed they have, so that's all good. There is one final optional thing we could do to make our code a little bit more readable. If we switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, when you're passing multiple values to a procedure, it's not always obvious what you're passing those values to. So to make it a little easier to read, we can name the parameters that we're passing these values to. So to name the value, or sorry, name the parameter that I'm passing the movie title value to, I can say title colon equals. I can then do the same thing for the date watched value. I'm passing that to the watch date parameter, watch date colon equals. And finally, I'm passing movie score to the score parameter. So score colon equals. This provides one advantage in that I've just, in the case, just seen that I've uh, misspelt watch date. Uh, that was lucky. Uh, so one advantage of this is that it makes it a little more obvious which parameters you're passing your values to. It also means that you could actually pass your values in in any order you like. You don't have to follow the sequence in the tooltip anymore. Uh, I'm just going to do a couple of other quick things as well and break these onto multiple different lines using a space underscore continuation character. And that allows me to write that single instruction across multiple different lines just making the whole thing a little bit easier to read and maintain. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, just to gain some more experience with declaring and using parameters. Alternatively, you can move on to the next part of this lesson, which talks about how to use parameters which accept references to objects.